Sincerely Jen that we're going to be making in this video today. This isn't the exact bag, but the exterior fabric will be the same, just different um, interior fabric and the webbing will be a little bit different, but I just wanted to show you before we got started um, what the finished product will look like. I'm going to go over all of the pieces. Um, we have a piece of webbing and I actually glue the edges. I burn them, but I also glue them so that they <laughs> don't fray or fall apart. And I'll either use the Fabric Fusion or the, um, I think it's Beacon Fabric Tac, but today I'm using the Fabric Fusion because that's what I have with me. So for pieces, all of all of my fabric and interfacing came from Joann's. So you still have time to make these for Halloween if you want, um, without having to order supplies. We have two of the exterior pieces. I don't know. And two of the lining pieces. And then we have two exterior gusset pieces, two interior gusset pieces. We have two handle, these are the handle casing pieces. There's two of them made with a contrasting fabric, but if you want to use the same fabric, you could. Um, all of these pieces are all interfaced with SF 101. And then we have two handle facing pieces. These are not interfaced at all. So we have two handle casings that are interfaced and two handle facings that are not interfaced. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too confusing. And then I'll be using one of these gorgeous tags from Heartwood and Hyde. Hopefully it focuses here. Um, like I said, all of my supplies, the fabric and the interfacing came from Joanne Fabrics. So really easy to get things locally, hopefully. Um, and let's get starting sewing. I'm gonna prep a couple pieces really quick um, that I was going to do before I started filming and I forgot. <laughs> so you can watch me prep these or if you wanna sew along, prep also. But we want to fold these edges of the facing in by a quarter of an inch. So I'm actually drawing a line at a half of an inch and then I'll fold up to that line. And then I'm going to press it really well because I don't have double stick tape with me. Okay. Um, I'm also going to, it's a half inch seam allowance on these, so I'm gonna mark. You don't have to do this, but this helps me um, know like kind of where to pivot on these angles. So 
So I'm gonna do it on both of them. So this is what I have just to mark where my pivots will be. And again, that's the half inch seam allowance. So if you are marking, I'm going to go fold these over and iron them. Okay, so I like to use a lot of steam, so you can hear my iron steaming back there. Um, also, I'm going to mark my centers here and there is um markings on your pattern piece to where you need to transfer those markings and i don't have my pattern piece so i'm just going to measure down i'll do that first so where you can kind of see you can kind of see where the angle changes on this pattern piece. So I'm just marking there. And you want to do that on all four of these larger pieces. Okay, and then I'm going to do that same thing to the interior pieces.
Okay, so I have all of my markings transferred and my centers clipped. Um, I am going to sew my tag on now. I kind of forgot to <laughs> with the first one when I was struggling a little bit. So I'm just going to figure out what I want in the front. I think I like this piece for the front. The hand of the moth. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to sew my tag three inches down, centered, right here. And it helps if you have double stick tape, but I don't have that with me right now. And now that my pieces are prepped, I'm going to pull this back forward. How do you guys do it with an industrial that you can't move your machine around? <laughs> and if you want to leave your tails long, you can certainly do that and tie it in the back. Or if you want, you can back tack if you don't want to tie them. Oh shoot. <laughs> I picked up an extra piece. Crappity crap. Wow. Okay, well, don't do that. Make sure all your pieces are out of the way. <laughs> Yikes. All right. Okay, let's try this again. Such a bummer. Back here, so I'm just gonna trim that. Okay, so if I do back tack, I like to cut these front ones, the thread really short, and then still pull them to the back. So like the tails are still on the back and you don't have the tails on the front. So that's an option too. Okay, so I think all my pieces are finally like prepped. Um, so we're gonna start with the handle um face casing and the handle facing where did it come right here and you're gonna put them right sides together so your handle casing is facing up and your handle facing is facing down and I'm actually going to turn it this way so I can see my lines that I drew. And I'm going to sew them. And we want to do that with both of, both of them. So you can see. And if you want to like use double stick tape or anything to help keep that down, that. Is very cool too. I am going to put a clip here though, because. 
you do stitch it down. So, all right, so I'm going to turn it this way so I can see my lines and so basically just throw on the line because I drew out my seam allowance. your back tack um, when you start and stop and just you know in the directions she does have you go through one piece at a time but for this video I'm gonna be sewing both pieces and then moving on to the next step So like she'll say, do all of this and then repeat on the other um, handle casing. Um, so now what you wanna do is clip, you're gonna clip into the corners as close as you can to the thread without clipping the thread. You don't wanna do, you don't wanna clip the thread. pieces. And then what you're going to do is turn your facing. So your facing and your casing are wrong sides together. And I'm going to go iron this. You can just clip it and finger press it, but since I have my iron on, I'm going to iron it and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here are your two handle uh, casings and you've got your front side and then we flip the facing back. So it's the wrong sides are together and you want to make sure that the edge is still folded over. And now we're going to top stitch around the whole facing area, just the facing on both of them. And I'm actually going to do the edges first because <laughs> I don't like sewing blind. So I'm going to, I guess I can just use this. So we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch, I believe. Also, um, oh, sorry, I'm moving this. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, some of these layers, it would probably be better to have a walking foot on because when we get to putting the bag together, there's one, two, three, four, four-ish layers. I don't know. It's not a lot of layers, but because it's thinner fabric, it might help to have a walking foot. 
just to kind of keep the layers together. I know like with the first bag I did, I had a little bit of a problem just So I did that because, like I said, I don't. I feel like I'm sewing blind trying to get that, and I don't know. I like my top thread to be on the top of my projects, so I'm just gonna go around the rest of it. Make sure you back tack. And this actually happened on both of mine. Uh, I think probably because it's quilt cotton and it's not interfaced, but it does stretch a little bit. So I just take it and trim it down evenly. I don't know. I've never been successful with facings having it turn out exactly how it's supposed to be, so. Okay, so now what we are going to do is put these right sides together. You're gonna put And we're going to make it into a band with a half inch seam allowance. going to, I don't think this is in the direction, but I'm going to go press my seams open. So now you have a band made out of your handle casing pieces and we'll make the casing with it in just a minute, but I'm going to go press the seams open. So now what we are going to do is making sure these seams line up we're gonna basically fold fold it in half all the way around the band so you want to make sure that it's not twisted and i'm just going to clip all the way around so like here it's kind of hard i wish <laughs> i wish i would have used the lighter fabric but here you can see like you're forming the casing for the handle 
so your raw edges are all matching up. So wrong sides together, there we go. Matching your seams. And your raw edges will match. Okay, so we have this, and I'm gonna go press, well, I'll baste. Yeah, I'll baste it first and then I'll go press it. But you want the top to be nice and crisp and you want to baste between less than, I'm doing like edge of presser foot, so between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. Since I already basted this facing piece down, I'm kind of just skipping over it to my next double layer. All right, I'm gonna go press the top of this. Okay, so now our handle casing is done. So we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna move on to the gusset. And like I said, she explains the pieces for like the exterior and then says go back and repeat steps. Um, I'm just gonna go through and sew all four gusset pieces together. And again, it's a half inch seam allowance. Right sides together. And there goes my iron. And then you're gonna go press these seams open. And then you're gonna top stitch on each side of the seams on both the exterior and the lining at an eighth of an inch. So you have both your exterior and your lining sewn together, both pieces, and you've top stitched the seam together, or the seam open. And now we're going to start sewing the bag together. Okay, so you want to measure down. She tells you how far to measure down on these pieces. Make a mark. Ooh, I'm not left-handed, so. <laughs> uh, 
Now this one, I'm gonna trim a little bit of this off, but see how that, it was like the perfect fit, but it kind of frayed a little bit after I washed it. So that will be in the same allowance, but I am gonna measure from the top of that fray. I'm not gonna cut that off. And you'll wanna do that on both pieces, but I'm just gonna work with the exterior right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our main exterior panel pieces and we're going to line up this marking here with that marking that we made at the beginning of the video, right sides together. And we're gonna do it on the other side. And we're gonna do the center. We're gonna match up our center mark from the beginning with that seam. And then we're going to clip the rest of the gusset in. Okay, so here we go. We're starting and stopping at that mark here. Okay, so we have one side sewn on, and now we're gonna do the same with the other side. So we're gonna take the other panel of the exterior and match that up. And if it helps you by clipping the curve a little bit, you can definitely do that. Okay, so make sure your other gusset piece is pushed out of the way when you're sewing this gusset side on. So I'm just pushing it back. Like I said, I'm just keeping this other side of the gusset out of the way underneath the fabric. Oops. So now what we're gonna do is, so we have like this top part that's not sewn, that doesn't have the gusset, we're gonna sew that together at a half inch seam allowance. So, zoop. And down this side, on both sides, and we're gonna back tack really well.
and I do have to keep this video at an hour so depending on how I edit I'm going to not show the lining but the lining is done the exact same way so if I have time I'll show it but I may not have time And then we're going to cut our seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. Okay. So you're going to do the lining the exact same way as you did the exterior, but you have to leave a hole in the lining on one of your sides. So like when you're sewing here, leave this open, but only on one side of the gusset. Okay, so we are moving on to the lining and kind of like I mentioned, I may have to edit this part out or speed through it for timing purposes, but it's just like it's just like the exterior where you match up the bottom and the center of the gusset and then you match up your markings on both pieces which looks like I forgot to do. So let me do that. Or it may be, because it's an air erasing marker, it may have just come off. Make sure right sides are together. Okay, so now we are going to sew with the half inch seam allowance. I'm going to go all the way around, starting and stopping at that mark. Make sure you back tack well. And you also want to come in to a 5 8 and then go back out, merge back out to the half inch. Okay, so now we're gonna do the other side of the panel and we're going to clip it like we did. And what I forgot to mention before is you wanna start with the half inch seam allowance and move out to a 5 8 seam allowance and then end back up at the top with the half inch seam allowance again. Okay, so again, start at a half inch seam allowance, move into a 5 8 seam allowance, and then back out to a half inch seam allowance, starting and stopping at that line. And I'm also leaving an opening here to turn the bag through as well. So we're gonna jump, stitch. Now we're going to sew these pieces, these side pieces, at a half an inch seam allowance. The 
Okay, so it's all sewn together. We've got the top here. We stopped where we started the other stitches. And I'm gonna trim down the seam allowance and I will leave um, this, this part that's open. Ooh, it's not very big, uh-oh. You usually wanna leave a little bit bigger. Um, she recommends five inches. So we'll see how big of a struggle. I only did three. But I'm gonna trim down the seam allowance now. gonna do is we are going to take this piece the exterior piece and our handle casing and we're going to put the handle casing inside the exterior piece so this casing opening faces the, ex the exterior of the fabric and then we're gonna match these side seams, sorry, it's hard to tell, with the side seams of the bag. And then we're gonna base that together. Okay, so the raw edges are together, it's all clipped together, and then I'm gonna baste it at a quarter inch seam allowance. have two of the pieces together and now we're going to take our lining piece and we're going to turn it right sides out and we're going to put it inside the bag matching up the side seams Have your centers clipped on the exterior and the lining so you can match those up if that's helpful. Um, I'm nesting the side seams. And we're going to sew this all the way around at a half inch seam allowance. This is where all my layers kind of start to walk in a little bit. So I think a walking foot would be better, but I don't have one. So here we go. We're gonna go all the way around half inch seam allowance. Back tacking at the front, the start and the stop. turn the bag through the hole in the lining which like I said I did not leave a very big hole so good thing it's just cotton not nothing thick Whew. okay I did it and I shouldn't turn the camera so now what we're gonna do is I'm actually just gonna sew the sew it shut sew the hole shut now it says to do it the very last step, but we're just gonna do it now. So we're just gonna edge stitch the hole closed. If you want, you can do it by hand. Um, I would recommend using a matching thread, but I'm not switching threads right now. I 
Okay, so the lining is all tucked in here, sewn shut. I'm gonna go press this because I'm gonna top stitch right here and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna press it really quick. Okay, so we're going to top stitch all the way around the edge. And I'm actually gonna start at a side seam. Make sure your underside of the bag is not in the way. Trimming down my edges and, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, now for the handle, what we do is we take our piece of webbing and a safety pin, where did it go? And we're gonna thread it all the way around the top casing of the bag. making sure it does not get twisted at all. So it comes out the other side here. And note to self, use contrast, contrasting thread and fabric when you're making a tutorial. So now you have both pieces out this way and you have this overlap and you just want to sew together um she says sew together the overlap and I don't know if you're supposed to leave it it says lay flat and leave it and sew but that's a big overlap so I'm actually going to just overlap it like an inch and sew that together. Put the glue on it. So it's not the neatest, but it's not going to show because now what you want to do is you want to turn this so this, the overlap is over here on this side seam. So you just kind of pull, pull it through. Whoops, I think I pulled it too far. Yes. Where did it go? Okay, so you just want to stitch the side seam with the strap in it so the strap doesn't twist around. So as long as like, you want to make sure it's over there because you do pull this to kind of gather to close the bag. So I think she says to have it laying flat so it's even, but I think you could probably cut it like an inch shorter than what she says. Um, so I'm just kind of eyeballing the same amount of extraness coming out.
And I'll send you my little extras, my extra little threads and stuff. Oh, give me a little more light, but let me move the camera and show you. So here it is, and then you just singe it shut if you want. I think this is such a cute bag, but I really actually like the size. I have a, I have a bag that's about this size from 31. I like that's like to have it as a crossbody. I like this bag. So here it is, and here is my other one. I will say the thinner the webbing the more it cinches. But, so my two youngest have their trick-or-treat bags and they can tell the difference because the strap is a different color and the lining is different. But I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for joining me today in this uh, Halloween marathon sewing. Please make sure you check out the next channels. My, the schedule is going to be linked in my video description. I would love it if you liked the video and subscribed to my channel and came back and watched more. Thanks for watching.